Hi, I'm Gary Hall Sr. from the Race Club. This week on The Secret Tip, we're going to talk about the way in which you pull underwater in the freestyle stroke. Now, what I say applies also to butterfly and breaststroke. Let's talk specifically about freestyle today. A lot of you may not even realize that you have a choice. You just stick your arm in the water and you start pulling and you think that's the way it's done. But you have options. Let me give you what the two options are. The most extreme option is one, you put your arm in and you pull almost straight down and in some cases the hand crosses over underneath the body and then releases. At the other extreme, you enter the hand and the elbow stays almost at the surface and you pull almost to the side with a very shallow hand and then the hand releases. So what's the difference between those two extreme different ways of pulling underwater? Well, it has to do with efficiency. And when you measure efficiency, you have to look at the propulsive power against the frontal drag. The speed that we can generate is directly proportional to the power that we generate, but it's inversely proportional to the drag or frontal drag that we create during our swimming. So let's start first with power. Let's take the first extreme example where we pull straight down and even underneath this. When we create that motion, our shoulder joint is in what we call a positive angle. If you look at me now, this is neutral. This is a zero angle. This is flexion or a positive angle. And when the shoulder joint moves behind me, that's called a negative angle or extension. The most powerful position we can be in mechanically to swim is when the shoulder is in this front positive position. So when we're pulling down and underneath us, our shoulder is in that exact same position. So we're in a very powerful position. So it turns out as we pull this way, we can generate more power. How do I know that? Well, if you're in the high elbow position or what we call the early vertical forearm and you're recovering with the other hand over the top, you now put yourself into an extended position where both shoulders are pointing back, arms are pointing back, and that weakens the power that is generated with the high elbow. And so we look at swimmers underwater and we see most of the swimmers pull in this position, the position I call of power. But when you look at the fastest swimmers of the world, they're not pulling that way. They're pulling with the elbow extremely high. Why? The answer has to do with frontal drag. The reason they're in that position is that it reduces drag dramatically over the deep dropped elbow position. And why does it do that? Well, in order to understand the drag forces that are imposed on the arm during the freestyle pull, you have to understand what the velocity of all the parts of the arm are during the pull cycle. And they're different. Now let's start with the human body. Let's assume that we're very good swimmers and that we can swim 50 meters in 25 seconds. That means that our body was moving at 2 meters per second for that 50 meters. So the question is, how fast is our arm moving underwater if our body is moving at 2 meters per second? Well, let's start with the hand. First of all, in most great swimmers, their hand will enter the water and go through the cycle and leave the water almost in the exact same position that it entered. That means that the net velocity of the hand underwater was zero. That also means that the hand did not contribute to any frontal drag because in order to create drag you have to have motion. You have to have some size and you have to have some motion. So if the hand is net velocity is zero, what about the rest of the arm? What is it doing during the stroke cycle? Well, let's start with the arm that's attached to the body. Since the body is moving at 2 meters per second, this part of the arm has to be moving at 2 meters per second. And as we move down the arm, although it's not necessarily linear, the speed gets less as we move down the arm. So here, maybe 2 meters per second, here a meter and a half, 1 meter, a half to zero. The point is that the further up we go in the arm, the faster forward the arm is moving. The faster the, the arm is moving and the bigger the arm is, the more frontal drag. 
So most of the drag of the arm is contributed by the upper part of the arm, not the lower part of the arm. So how does that affect our pull? Well, consider the fact that when you're pulling deep, this part of the arm goes off alignment, off axis, almost instantly. As soon as any part of our body sticks out or goes off axis, the drag forces go, go up tremendously. If we contrast that to the high elbow, we keep the upper arm in almost the line of motion as long as possible until we're forced to have to pull it back and get it out of the water. The net effect of that is we stay in a better drag position here than we do when we come deep. The other reason that the drag is greater when we pull deep is that a straight arm actually creates more drag than a bent arm. Same shape, same size, different shape, different drag coefficient. So the question is, do I want more power or do I want less drag? Well, in the world of swimming, drag trumps power. So it's actually better for you to swim with less frontal drag in this high elbow position, giving up some power than it is to pull straight down and have more power but greater drag. You not only will swim faster in this position, but you won't tire as fast. And that's why you see great swimmers swimming with a high elbow.